friends, and welcome to the fourth video in my fall series this year. Make sure to check out the playlist in my description box below if you missed any of the previous videos. Today we're going to be making some Dollar Tree fall DIYs that are so easy to do but will look beautiful in your home. For our first project, we're using this really beautiful sign from Dollar Tree. It is so cute just as is, but we're going to give it a little bit of a fall vibe. I removed that artificial flower and sanded that down, and now I'm going to give it one coat of black paint all the way around. Once that dries, I'm going to take a white paint pen and draw stitches around each of the letters. This is really going to define those letters and just give it a little bit more character. It is so pretty. I love these little stitches on the sides. Now to give it a pop of color, I'm going to be adding a beautiful sunflower that came off of a Dollar Tree pick, but you could certainly add like a half of a pumpkin or any flower that you desire. It's as simple as that and this project is finished. You could really customize this piece by painting it whatever color you like or adding whatever color floral or pumpkin that you'd like. I think it turned out beautiful and I hope you guys like it too. Another simple project is using one of Dollar Tree's plastic cloches. Remove the label from it, and then I'm going to take a wooden bead and fill each of those holes in with some wood filler. Now you want to add a little bit extra because as it dries it'll shrink and you don't want to be able to see those hole indentions. Once that dries, I'm going to go over it lightly with some sandpaper and then give it a coat of black chalk paint. Then I'm going to hot glue this to the top of the cloche to create a handle. Now you could also add a beautiful finial to the top that you can find at Hobby Lobby. That would be just as gorgeous. Then taking some extra greenery that I already have, and I'm going to cut those bottom pieces off so they'll sit flat. And I'm using some of Hobby Lobby's beautiful pumpkins. They have these gorgeous little tendrils and stems on it. But Dollar Tree has some really gorgeous pumpkins too that will fit in this cloche perfectly. Then you just add them in the cloche, and this project is done. How beautiful and simple this was. And we'll just add some extra beauty to your fall decor. Again, you can customize this using different colors of pumpkins. I think it is so beautiful with our first project, and I can't wait to display them in my house this fall. If you love Dollar Tree DIYs and you haven't done so already, make sure to click that subscribe button right below this video and select all under the notification bell so you'll be reminded the next time I upload a new video. Now for project number three, we're going to be using one of Dollar Tree's 9-inch wood blend wreath forms as well as some of their wheat bundles. They have a variety of colors. I'll be using the greenish yellow and the burgundy. I cut each of the stems off of the bundles and I'm using two bundles of green and two bundles of the burgundy. I'm going to place each one of these stems directly into that wood blend wreath without having to use hot glue or floral wire. They will sit nice and perfect tucked in each one of these little grooves. I am alternating the colors as I go around and once I make one complete rotation I'll take the extra stems and go in and fill in any bare spots. Just as simple as that this wreath is finished and it is gorgeous. I love the colors in this and the whimsical nature of all of these wheat stems just flowing around and I have the perfect place in mind to hang this in my home this fall. For our next project, we're using one of Dollar Tree's wood trays. This was $5 in their plus section, and it is really good quality for $5. It measures about 15 and 1 8 inch across and then 11 inches in width. I'm going to be staining this using a brown acrylic watered down mixture. Since this is all wood, you could certainly stain it, but since I was doing this indoors, I went ahead and used the watered down paint mixture stain. Now I did notice because this piece is glued together that certain areas will not take the stain or the watered down mixture. So for those areas, I just added a little bit more paint in those areas more so than the water to kind of blend that in. I also made sure that I got the bottom part of it. 
Once that dried, I'm gonna take some jute cord and hot glue this around each one of the handles. This is just gonna give it a beautiful texture. I only had to add the hot glue at the beginning and the end. As you are pulling it through, if you just keep each piece very closely tucked to the next one, you will not have to glue it except for at the beginning and the end of the jute cord. Once that's complete, I'll do the exact same thing on the other handle. This just gives it more of a finished look, and I am loving how this one is turning out. I measured the inside of the tray, and it measures 14 and 1 half inches by 10 and 3 eighths of an inch. I made sure to measure each of those sides to make sure they were exactly the same because I'm going to be using this placemat from Dollar Tree. Now, I could not decide between this placemat or this placemat because they are both absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to use both of them. I measured the width of the placemat so I could determine how much I would need to cut off of each edge. Since this does have a design on each side, I want to make sure that it looks even once I cut those sides off. I'm just going to make a mark with a marker on the back and then draw my straight line using a ruler. Then I can cut this down with a pair of scissors and make sure that it's going to fit inside of the tray properly before cutting the top and bottom pieces off. Now, because this has wording on it, I knew that I was going to have to cut some of the words off, and I originally wanted to cut off the top part, but that was going to cut down into the farmer's market portion, so I'm going to have to cut the wording off of the bottom. So I just made my marks on the back, again, drew out my line so I could cut that part down. Then I'll make sure that it's going to fit inside of the tray, and it is so pretty. I love these colors together. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other placemat. Once I have that cut down, I again will make sure that it's going to fit inside of my tray. And my original thought process was I wanted to be able to hot glue the two of these together back to back so that all I would have to do is flip it over when I wanted to change it out. But for some reason, it just would not line up. It would show some of the other one behind it. So I'm just going to have to use them one at a time. I'm not even going to hot glue it in. I'm just going to set it in there. And you can switch them out whenever you like. I think this project turned out absolutely beautiful. And I love the versatility of it that I can change it out with my decor depending on which placement I want to use. You guys let me know which one is your favorite between the two placemats. And if you have a favorite out of today's video, please let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. I truly appreciate you. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.